Hello and first of all, thank you for joining this Parallels RAS video. Today I'll demonstrate you a new feature called multi-tenancy using our tenant broker and multiple RAS farms. In version 17.1, we have introduced a tenant broker option where you can have multiple farms that are on the same network or different domains or even different networks. And we now have the ability to communicate between gateways within those multiple farms. The setup process, it's super simple. First of all, you need to create a virtual machine in your environment or a group of them, depending on your size of your organization. That will be the broker, which can be a group of gateways and as well connected to load balancers. I have already installed the new tenant broker option and also configure a gateway to be listening the traffic for this particular demonstration. To set up, the process will be super simple. So we don't need Hyper-V at this point. So let's move the console to the middle and let's configure the tenants. In my environment, I have two different tenants. And one I will call, you know, tenant one. And the public IP address, it's your DNS entry name. So I have a one already for tenant1.lab.poc and I will copy this particular entry over here. So let's click OK. We'll save the settings and let's connect to my primarily farm or my first farm or customer. I'll connect with my user. We'll come to my site definitions and let me unjoin this particular broker settings and I'll create a new one. So let's add a new join broker. We'll use the key that we copied a moment ago. And now it's synchronizing the data, which takes a couple of seconds to, to be configured. If I log off and go back to my tenant broker settings, we'll be seeing the synchronization happening as well from this side. It came uh, OK for the gateway, the tenant and the agent. Why not let add another one? So let's add tenant two. And this will use a different DNS entry. We'll copy the key, click OK, we'll save it, and let's go to that particular tenant now. Go to Site Definitions. This one never joined the tenant broker. Even easier, we just use the Join Tenant Broker option. Save it. Now it's going to synchronize, it will take a little bit of time to have that done. So let's go back to my main console here. Let's connect to the broker one more time. And before I test it, I want to show you a couple of interesting things. We see the tenants at any time. You can right click and open the tenant console. So you don't have to you know, log off and open or don't know where to go, so you can have a centralized point of view for that matter. But now it's the moment of checking if everything is working fine. So let's open the browser, which I have it here, two different URLs, one for 10 and one, and another one for 10 and two. Let's connect. This is just a self-signed certificate error message. We connect it to my farm one, so I will use my credentials. And once we log in, we'll see the list of applications. What I want to show is two things. Here we'll see a much greater number of applications in, you know, displayed. And let's log in here with tenant number two, which is a smaller, more dedicated environment for specific apps. They will log in with their own credentials. As you can see here, we have only calculator, paint, and WordPad while we're detecting the client. 
So let's use HTML5 here. And here we have a much greater number of applications. Therefore, you don't have to use slash company name anymore. Using the tenant broker, you can always use or define on your DNS tenant name dot your company dot com.